guys. So the last kind of informal video series that I did was really successful. Got lots of great feedback for it on here and on lots of other platforms. So I thought I would do another series and this time focus on how to work with specific issues because this is one of those questions that is so common. We get so many students who will ask us during Q&As, what if a client comes in with this problem or what if a client comes in with that problem, what do I do? So in this series, I'm going to be going through some of the most popular issues that clients bring in and how I think of those problems and the different ways in which I tend to work with clients who bring those in. Now, the caveat here is that there are lots of ways of working with different issues. There isn't a one way only type of scenario. So there'll be lots of people out there who take a different approach than I do. Fantastic. And I certainly hope for those people, if you're still tuning in, that maybe the way that I think about it will add to what you're already doing really well. And please, in the comments section, share how you work with these clients as well so that we can all grow as a community. Right. So first up is one of my favorite types of issues to work with. And I like it because it's easy. And when clients solve this for themselves, it opens up a whole lot more freedom in their lives. And this particular issue is the fear of flying. This is a very common one for people who are coming to see hypnotists or NLP coaches and so on. So before we jump into what techniques to do or how to approach this, let's sit and think about for a little bit the actual problem. I have yet to date have, a, have had a client come in who is actually afraid of flying. They're not. The fear of flying is actually one of three different fears or a combination thereof. And it's either a fear of crashing, a fear of confined spaces, or I should say, and a fear of being out of control. So the fear of crashing is totally normal. I'm afraid of crashing. I certainly don't want that to happen. Uh, however, clients who have this particular manifestation of the fear of flying have built up in their heads these amazing cinematic disasters. So that's going to be our first port of call, which we'll talk about in a moment. With group number two, fear of confined spaces, these clients tend to be fewer, although I have had a handful of them here and there. And they might be specifically fear of small spaces in the context of a plane, but a lot of times it is more of a generalized fear of small places, so then we would treat it more as we would a typical claustrophobia. Now, the third group, which can stand on their own or is a part of the other two, is the fear of loss of control. Some clients are just afraid of sitting in a plane and having someone else fly. These are, also, these are also typically the clients who don't like the ride in the backseat of a car. Once again, they're a smaller minority compared to the people who are afraid of crashing. Uh, however, once again, then we're going to be going right to the issues around control as opposed to framing it completely within the context of flying. Now, all three of these groups will often have a meta problem. And a meta problem is a problem that encapsulizes and holds the fear in place. And typically, that meta problem is the fear of losing control while being on the plane. So not only are they afraid of crashing or the small spaces or the feeling of being out of control, the fact that somebody else is flying, they're also afraid of them losing control of their emotions. So this creates this feedback loop of fear. So they play a really bad movie in their head, they get afraid, then they become afraid of how they're going to respond when actually on the plane, so that amps up the fear response even more. So we need to address the meta problem within the therapeutic approach. Typically for me, for a fear of flying client, it is anywhere between one and three sessions, usually closer to one, but sometimes it's a little bit longer depending on the nuances of the issue. Because everyone does a problem differently, it's really important to pay attention to how your client's actually describing this. Now, for example, uh, I had a client who one time had a fear of crashing, and it wasn't just the fear of crashing. 
they actually developed the fear because they were uh, on a flight somewhere when they found out after they landed that a loved one had passed away and it was absolutely devastating. Uh, so how I would handle that is slightly different than how I'd handle a client who hasn't had anything traumatic with flying uh, but just has taken on or internalized external images of bad possibilities. So, in terms of how we work with these clients, there are some broad areas. And when I say first, this is the order I typically work in. If you work in a different order, fantastic. I like to elicit the strategy for the fear, especially if it's a fear of crashing, as opposed to the other manifestations of this. So I will set up the chairs in my office like the seats of an airplane, and I will have my client walk me through how they do the problem, step by step, meaning I want to know what happens first in the outside world that lets them know it's time to be afraid. I want to know what pictures they're painting in their head. I want to know how far into those pictures before they start feeling bad. What are the things they're saying to themselves? And I've seen enough of these clients where, you know, you can kind of predict what those pictures and what those words are going to be. However, the reason why I do a strategy elicitation for these clients is I want to bring it to conscious awareness that they actually are doing this with their own thought process. And if they can do this with their own thought process, then they can use their thoughts in a more constructive, healthy way. So once we get that, then we start playing with the images and with the words, uh, typically doing submodality shifts. Uh, depending on the situation, you might choose to do a fast phobia relief. Uh, the options are wide open for those of you who are EFT practitioners. That's another avenue you can go down depending on your clients. What we want to do though is to start separating the client from the internal representations they have. So they get the direct experience of being in control of how they're using their thoughts. From here, we want to start to reframe those thoughts. Start to place emphasis on them as being fiction, if they are. So start bringing in some humor. Start inviting the client to consciously make choices of what they want to do with those movies. One thing you can do with these inner films is to give better endings. And the client's going to go, well, wait a minute, but that's made up. <laughs> well, everything else that they had been doing in their mind up to that point was made up too. So we want to start to reframe and change the internal representations. We also may need to make some changes in terms of the identity because it's likely that they've had this fear for a long time. So they're used to saying to themselves, I can't fly, I'm afraid of flying, I have this fear. All these uh, linguistic knots that help to hold the problem into place. So we want to expand them outside of that, get them to think on a much bigger scale of who they are as a person. If they have a trip lined up, which is usually the catalyst for them to come in and see us, we can associate them into all of the great experiences they'll be having because of that trip and having flown there and come back safely and feeling good, feeling empowered. So you want to load up as many positive states as you can and collapse those positive states onto the triggers, a collapsing anchor. So whatever external triggers in the past that may have made them feel afraid, such as uh, getting in the car to go to the airport, being at the airport, or more commonly than not, booking the ticket. We want to apply as many positive resources as possible to that. Now, at some point, you may also need to work through any type of secondary gain. They may have had gotten something in the past out of having the fear of flying. Maybe they didn't have to travel for work then, or maybe it prevented them from having to do things that they didn't want to do. So we need to clean up any type of secondary gain. You can do this through six-step reframe, a dreaming arm, or parts work. Now, if the client has specific instances in the past that they keep talking about in terms of the fear and you can see and hear them going into the negative state, then you'll want to clean up those specific instances. You can do this through a re-imprinting, you can do this through a change of personal history if you're an NLP -er. you can do this through the fast phobia relief process. Uh, any of those types of techniques will work just fine. Now, if the client has more of a fear of the enclosed spaces, then what you want to do is to begin to expand their awareness out, to get them in touch with how it feels to be bigger than the space, to be beyond the space. Uh, so activating peripheral vision, 
uh, having an awareness of them beyond their physical self, having a sense of the expansiveness of the sky. Uh, that's a really nice one for people who whose fear is mainly around the enclosed space. Now I am in New York, so there's lots of sirens, and if I stop for all of them, I'll never get this finished, so I'll just keep going here. So with all of my clients, I'm going to teach them some skills to be in charge of their own states. This could be activation of the parasympathetic nervous system through peripheral vision, expanded awareness, uh, heart math techniques. I may also teach them EFT, depending on the type of client I have, if they're going to be receptive to that. But any type of skill that you can teach that will allow them to take control of their own state is going to be really powerful for them. In deep trance, I will have them practice that over and over and over and over again in the multiple settings where in the past they would have had the fear. And then finally, this idea or this fear of losing control, this is going to need to be reframed because it's unlikely, it's not completely out of the question, but it is unlikely that most of your clients have actually lost control on a plane. I've had a few who have, and they had some great stories about being escorted off, but they're in the minority. Most of these clients have these uh, internal movies of them losing control, and the way they typically do this is dissociated, meaning they see themselves as if they're watching a movie, they see themselves on the plane freaking out, if you move them into the position of seeing through their own eyes and feeling what it's like to be on the plane and tapping into those resources, then it puts the control back in their hands and they also realize that, no, that other movie is false. It, it's not true. You create a, a um, predictive error in the brain, which is a really powerful tool for creating change. So that's it in a nutshell. I'm probably leaving stuff out, uh, but I wanted this to be more informal, and I also want to give you as much as I, I can in a short span of time. So I hope you found this fun, interesting. Uh, click the link below to, dis to discover more. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, comment how you work with these clients. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.